Now, in this particular video of .NET Framework, we are going to cover the compilation process. As in the previous video, we have already discussed several times, like we have the language independency when we are working the .NET Framework. So in this video, we will see how we can achieve that. So if I talk about the complete compilation process for any particular language in .NET Framework, you can classify the compilation process into two parts. In the first particular step, the particular language is compiled by the language compiler and it will be taken to an intermediate language. And in the second phase, the compilation is done by the JIT that is just in time. So let's see how this compilation process will look like. So as here you can see in this example, I have taken the several code may be written in VB.NET or C sharp.NET or maybe any other language supported by .NET framework. Suppose if I have a code written in VB.NET, so I will require a compiler who will compile the VB.NET code to the intermediate code. Similarly, if I am writing the code in C sharp, I require a compiler for that particular language. Because whenever we talk about a compiler, each compiler knows two languages. One is the source language and second is the target language. So whichever compiler you will get here in .NET framework, the source language may be different, but the target language will be same, that is the MSIL. We will discuss about it later, but let's see here what we will do here. Let's imagine I want to create an application and for that we need to write so many programs all together. We have suppose uh, 40 forms which we have written in various programming languages. So being a developer what we need to do is we will compile the different uh, language code with the different compilers such as VBC for VB.NET, C and C that is C sharp compiler or Visual Basic compiler by their respective for the respective language and the appropriate browser if you are using any other programming language. And what these compiler will do, they will compile all the programs, all right? Suppose you have written 10 classes or maybe more classes with some number of methods, a big number of code is there, but the complete code will be compiled by these language compilers and will be put in this MSIL, that is the Microsoft Intermediate Language. This Microsoft Intermediate Language code will be put either in a DLL file or in an .exe file. It all depends how you have written a particular code. For example, if you have written a program with the main method which used to be the starting point of any program, you will create a .exe file, all right? Because main is what? Main is the startup of the execution means the resultant will be the executable file that is .exe. But if you want to make your code to be used as a library and you have not put any main method in that, so the resultant will be .dll that is dynamic link library. So actually it doesn't matter which was your source language. Once the first phase compilation that is this phase I'm talking about the first phase compilation is done. The source code will be compiled to the MSI and now at that particular phase all the codes are similar. Obviously we cannot use the VB.NET code in C sharp or maybe C sharp code in VB.NET obviously we can't do that. But once both the codes now in MSIL we can anytime use one MSIL in another. All right so this is how this first phase of compilation takes place where all the codes have been compiled. Now, if you want to submit the code to the client end, what you can do, you can actually submit this MSIL code that will either be in DLL or in .exe form. You can submit that to the client end, which he can execute. All right. This is a permanent compilation because the compilation result is stored in a particular file. So this is about the first phase compilation. Now, for the second phase compilation, since the 
code is already in MSIL that is Microsoft Intermediate Language. As the name says, it is nothing but an intermediate language. Means it is not a source code, it is not a final code, it is something in between. Alright, so we further need to compile this MSIL in order to execute because we call it a PE file means portable executable file but any operating system will not be able to execute this portable executable file without any further compilation and that compiler will be the JIT compiler that is the just in time compiler which is provided by the .NET runtime environment as in the previous concept in the previous video we have already discussed about the runtime environment the common language runtime JIT is the component of that CLR itself so at the runtime what it will do it will compile all the code all the code means which is required to the machine code so that a particular machine would be able to execute that amount of code now let's say what is the benefit of doing these things right because what I'm doing I'm doing it in two phase all right what I could have done I could have done the direct compilation from the language code to the machine code it will be a faster process right wrong why because first thing because of this MSIL your language uh, independency or language interoperability concept is there in .NET framework second thing when you are doing this compilation it is converting the complete code into the MSIL complete code means as I said suppose you have hundred classes with thousands of methods in an application all the code will be converted but when you are using something when you are using an application you obviously don't use all the concepts all together for example if I am using Facebook I cannot chat or send a friend request or uploading the photo I can't do all the things together I will do one thing at a time either I will chat or will upload some photos or will send a send friend request or will poke someone anything one at a time so that is the responsibility of a just-in-time compiler that it will only compile the required or requested part from the client Oh, all right for example if you are creating the forms application in which you have 50 forms so user will be using one form at a time for example as soon as I start I'll get a login form I'll do the login I will get an MDI form which will give me several options from the menu from the menu I will go and click on a particular form that particular form will be open so the thing is I can't open all the forms all together so as soon as I'll keep on making the request the just-in-time compiler will only compile that particular part and will give you the machine code which the particular operating system will execute so this is how your compilation process is actually done now let's add one more concept it is actually said whenever you create the .NET applications or sorry any application in .NET framework the target machine is usually a windows machine true but nowadays using some more IDs like mono or Xamarin you can also create the android applications or windows phone application or even ios applications how is that possible it's possible because of this just in time because as i said every compiler knows two language one is source and another is the destination language so for this JIT, MSIL is the source code, means the source language and a destination language is generally the machine code for Windows. But if your target operating system is something different, you can modify the different flavor of JIT and can set it for the particular target. For example, if you're creating the Android applications in the .NET framework, you can design, obviously it is designed, the JIT is designed in such a way that the target code will be executable only in Android ones. So this is how you can compile a program and you can find the benefits of the compilation process of the .NET framework. 
Now, let us do a practical of a very basic program of VB.NET and c and we will see how the things goes on practically. For writing a basic program in .NET framework, we don't need to install any IDE basically. As here you can see in my root drive that is in C drive, I have a Windows folder inside which we will get a Microsoft.NET and inside that you will get a folder called framework. If you will come inside, you will get different versions of framework available. Like if I will go to 4.0, you will find inside this folder, you have a file called CSC and similarly if I look, we will also get the VBC that is Visual Basic Compiler as and C Sharp Compiler both. So uh, we are good to start writing a simple program as we used to do. So for doing that what we'll do is let's uh, come to the notepad plus plus this uh, simple application which I'm using here and here you can see I have saved it like sample dot cs and here using system system is the root class library which will provide you all the basic data types so here you can see like I have created a class sample class and inside this I have a main method with a very simple message using console dot write line console is one of the class available inside the system namespace and here you have the write line method and here I just printed welcome to tutorials point to execute that let's open a basic command prompt I have saved my application in this program inside the .NET folder of e drive all right and now here you will get sample.cs and sample.vv both so before executing or compiling these programs what I can do is I will first of all set the path where I'll get these compilers so uh, as here you can see let's copy this particular path and we'll sit, paste it here alright and now let's press enter the path is set so I'm good to access the CSC and VBC compilers so here let's compile this CSC sample.cs and you will see as soon as I done that let's come to the path where I have saved this so in e drive dot and now you will see is there is one sample application file created right this is nothing but the msil which got created and now whenever i'll try to execute that the runtime environment of dot net the git will execute this so let's see how we can do that so sample dot exe is the name of the file so let's execute that and you will get the message now uh, let's do the same thing with the vb file also but what will happen when i will compile the name will remain same so i will also change the name so let's do one thing let's first of all have a look on this vb code where i have done the very same thing but just some sim uh, different keywords like for using i use import system then module module name main method like sub main and inside that again the same method without any semicolon at the end so let's execute that and for doing that what I'll do is I will say VBC and this sample dot VB since I want to change the output file name so I will say out colon new sample dot exe alright so this is the this is how you can change the output file name here and as soon as I did that all right, I put the semicolon just in habit of that. All right, let me remove. Okay, it should work now. All right, so as you see, there is no error now. And uh, here I can check new sample.exe is there. So let me execute that. And again, I got the very same message. So this is how you can compile the different languages using the specific language compiler. And later, you can simply execute them to see the common output.